Welcome back to the channel. Uh, I put out a video a couple of weeks ago about whether it's still possible to buy a classic slash collectible Apple Macintosh in 2024 at a reasonable price. And I think the answer to that was definitely yes, if you're prepared to travel and perhaps put in a little bit of work. So the question occurred to me just recently, can you do the same with PC stuff? The answer to that is also yes, because I picked up this. Now, uh, not just this keyboard, but I brought, picked up this tiny branded computer, which I'll show you in a moment, this week, and I got it at a very reasonable price or free. So, don't know if it works. We're gonna have to try it out, and we don't know exactly what it is specification-wise, but I've got a, got a couple of clues. So, we're gonna have a look at it, decide if it's working, then, yes, we've looked out again, we've managed to get something that's moderately collectible. It's, um, depending on where you live in the world, you may not even be aware of the tiny brand, but it was quite a big manufacturer here in the UK between the kind of mid 1990s through to the very early kind of 20, uh, 2000s. It's, it's kind of history's intertwined with another big UK brand called Time. Um, both companies went out of business. I, I don't know if the economics of, of their running was completely uh, straightforward. But um, a lot of people bought tiny computers in the period, kind of early to mid 90s through to 2002, I think it was when they closed down, uh, because they were very affordable. They tended to bundle everything as well, and you'll see in a minute what I mean by that. So hopefully we've lucked out, hopefully we've got a working computer. And as I said, if we have, then yes, it is possible still to get collectible stuff in 2024 on the PC side. Let's find out. So here we have it. This is what I managed to pick up uh, a couple of days ago off uh, FreeCycle. Now, FreeCycle's exactly as the name implies. It's a website slash service where you can donate stuff locally for free. It's important uh, for FreeCycle that you don't charge for stuff. That's part of its ethos. So I did manage to get this completely free of charge. Now, um, in terms of whether it's working or not, I do not know. It wasn't, the, the description, there was one photo and there was like one sentence description of the whole thing. But let's have a look, see what we've got, see what, if you like, was in the collection. So we, I've shown you the keyboard. It's a fairly standard kind of internet type keyboard, tiny branded little card slot there. It's a PS2 style and it's got the color coding as most of the, items did from this kind of period in time. Um, we don't exactly know when it's come from, although we do have some clues. There's no date here on the keyboard. There's a model number. Um, and it's, this presumably stands for Windows and NT. So that's interesting. So let's move that to one side. So <laughs> as you can see, uh, Tiny did like bundling things. I haven't found an advert yet that describes this particular system exactly, but they often bundled scanners with their systems. This is one such scanner. I'm not sure that's original Tiny branding, but this was a Tiny scanner in the sense that it's uh, got a Tiny model number and they were known to be sold with the bundles. Uh, there's no power supply for that, so I don't know if that's working, but we shall find out, hopefully. Tiny branded speakers. And um, interestingly, these are directly mains powered. You don't often see that in portable speakers. We're missing the input cable and the cable to the other speaker, but they, they're not bad, quite light, um, but you know, hopefully functional. So that's quite good. Let's move those to one side. And there's the other one. Uh, I don't know who makes these, but they're standard kind of size for multimedia PC. Uh, the model code is CPR50 doesn't give any clues as to who made that. We also got a uh, joypad. So interestingly it's not USB, it's uh, based on the joystick port on sound cards, so it's uh, a D type connector rather than a USB and it's kind of a bit like console controllers at this time. I've got a Microsoft one here that's also from the same era and they're pretty similar but this is more like uh, it's definitely not as well made and it's a bit more like a console one. 
Anyway, so that, that's come with it as well, so that should be nice. So that, that implies that this person was maybe doing a little bit of gaming with this. It's a Maxfire Digital G08. And then we have the PC itself. It's not a back edition, there's a very slight amount of yellowing in the top half here. Um, the case is a typical tiny star case. They have this kind of slightly bulbous appearance to them, even though they're actually quite square. They kind of look like they're thicker at the top than the bottom. This particular one's got two drive bays. T Tiny made another case that only had the one. It was a little bit more kind of compact and a bit more petite and bijou. Power button on the front, two slots, floppy drive controller, very dusty. Um, and our first clue as to how old it is, it says it's a Pentium 3 inside here. Um, so that makes it somewhere between 1999 and 2004, because that's when the Pentium 3 was available. It's got a Windows 98 slash NT sticker on it as well. So presumably this is Windows 98 SE, if it's got an operating system installed. Now, uh, on the outside of the case, it's got some tiny embossing here, but there's no Windows certificate or authenticity, so I don't know exactly what it was intended to be running. Looking at the back, you've got a standard kind of setup. We've got the power supply at the top. Case fan if there is one, although the holes are empty, so I'm guessing not. Standard I.O. here. Got your two PS2 ports. Two USB, which I'm giving a USB 1.1s would be my guess. Got a serial, parallel, joystick port, as we previously discussed, and built-in VGA. So there's no separate video card on this particular model, although a lot of them did have. I'm guessing because it's onboard video, it's not going to be great. It's probably going to be Intel-based, at a guess. And we've got some uh, audio in the first slot here. We've also got a modem. It doesn't look like anything else has been added, like a better sound card or a better video card. Here we've got the um, tiny sticker and it's a model number 810L. Hasn't got a manufactured date on that I can see. So we still don't know exactly when it's made, but we do know it's either 1999, 2000, 2001, maybe 2002. But the Windows 98 sticker puts it kind of earlier in the in that Pentium 3 era. So what are we going to do? Are we going to switch it on first? Or are we going to open it up first? Let's open it up. So uh, some of the earlier tiny cases were kind of one sheet of metal that covered both sides on the top. This looks like it's got a separate top and bottom cover. Uh, so if we take the side off, we should be able to access the internals fairly easily. Convenient thumb little fun hole there. Okay. And the sides come off fairly easily. It's pretty clean on the inside of that, but that is a vertical surface. So let's have a look at the inside of the case itself. Okay, it's surprisingly clean. There's a little bit of dust here in the bottom of the case, uh, but not terrible. We still have the original hard drive now, if we're really lucky. We've still got the original operating system installed on there as well, which includes any drivers. Uh, hopefully a driver for that scanner as well, because having had a quick look around, it seems like the driver for that scanner can be problematic to find. It's not a slot one motherboard, it's a socket 317, so that puts it a kind of later Pentium 3, certainly not a very early one. Looks like there's only two memory slots, one of which is filled. I'm guessing there's going to be 128 megs of RAM. Very standard kind of ATX layout. Power supply is very small though, isn't it? It's a very short power supply. Um, so although it's got an ATX profile on the back, it's not ATX style on the inside. We've got the two optical drives. And we've got 40 pin ribbons actually, not 80 pin ribbons on the ID devices. So that makes it a fairly early implementation of IDE. Interesting. So we still don't know exactly how old this is. Uh, there's, there's a PSU barcode here that's got some numbers in it that could represent the year 2000, but that's a complete guess. Hopefully one of the other components has got something on it that's interesting. Right. Nothing on the bottom. It's 
not a bad case actually, it's, it's pretty sturdy, the edges aren't too sharp and it has got these kind of um, RF filtered springs on the edge of the case which you find on the slightly better cases. So that's interesting. Tiny was known for being a very budget retailer, so I was a little bit surprised to see that, but that is welcome. There is a floppy drive in that floppy drive bay, so that's nice. Uh, now, 1999 onwards, that means it was in the middle of the capacitor plague. Uh, I'm just looking at this motherboard, you can't see this yet, but there are some bulging capacitors. So there's a good chance this won't actually start up. I think we should turn it on and find out before we take anything else apart find out whether it actually boots or not so the answer to the question may be no maybe you can't buy or obtain a collectible pc in 2024 that's working because the, you know this is the period where that capacitor plague was a bit of a problem okay okay so i've got this dell monitor attached obviously the dell aesthetics a little bit different and it's a little bit more modern but it's the closest thing i've got in age uh, we're going to use the sandbar built into the monitor rather than the tiny speakers as I don't have the correct cables for those just to hand. I think I know why <laughs> the, the person was giving this away. I'm just trying to connect the monitor and the VGA connector on the motherboard is wobbling all over the place. So I'm guessing we're not going really to get a video signal out of this machine at all, uh, even if it does start up, um, which is questionable looking at those capacitors. If the ones in the power supply are also looking as questionable, there might be a loud bang and some smoke but we shall see. Everything is plugged in. Attach the keyboard. Let's power it up. So yeah, so nothing's happening. There's no separate power supply switch on the back. No, definitely dead. So actually, that's not a surprise. Given the age that this comes from and the capacitor play, motherboards from this era just aren't really working that well. So I'm not surprised it hasn't started up. I'm not surprised the person was giving it away. Now, it does mean that we've not been able to get a budget collectible PC. Uh, we did manage to get a budget collectible Apple product. Uh, are we going to be able to repair this? in a timely manner. I don't know, because the power supply shape was a little bit non-standard, I'm probably gonna have trouble finding a power supply that's gonna fit in here. Also, even if it does fit, I'm not sure the motherboard's gonna wake up. And even if it does, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get a video signal out of it because the video connector is loose. So there's quite a lot wrong with this picture at the moment. Let me see if I can find a power supply out of some spares I've got something that might fit, if not something at least we can prop in the right place and uh, give it another go. So as we're going to have to take out the power supply, I thought we'd have a little look at the inside of the case while we're at it. So the hard drive's in place, we don't know if that's working, uh, we don't know if the RAM's working, we don't know if the modem's working, we don't know if the optical drives are working, but we didn't get any power coming to the motherboard, at least it wouldn't switch on. So that's the thing we need to deal with first. Let me take out, so to get to the power supply, I'm gonna to have to take out quite a lot of the stuff that's down here. So let's just start with that. I don't think this has been touched inside. It's still got the original cable management in place. So whoever has had this in the past, they've obviously not upgraded anything, I don't think. And as I said, that means that this hard drive, if it's working, should contain the original operating system install. Now I could take out the whole caddy and I'm probably going to have to do that at some point but let me just see if I can get the drive out on its own first. So the hard drive is screwed in from the other side as well. So rather than take the other side off we'll just see if we can take the whole cage out. And indeed we can. So that's convenient. So what have we got? We've got a Fujitsu drive, so that's uh, nice. I think most of the ones around here were 18 to 20 gigs around this time. We've got a date code, January 2000. So this is quite an early-ish Pentium 3. Uh, this would have been 12 months after the first release of the Pentium 3. It was released in early 1999. 
drive looks in pretty good condition. It isn't too dusty. There is a little bit of dust, but considering this is 23, 24 years old, it's not too bad. Don't need to take the floppy drive out, I don't think. We do need to disconnect that power lead. So let's do that. Take the power connectors off there. Let's do the motherboard connector. You can't see that because it's underneath that brace. It is there. The audio from the optical drive is cable tied into that, so we're not going to be able to take the power supply out unless we undo these clips. So let's do that. So again, the fact that it's got the, op the audio cable from the optical drive to the sound on the motherboard, it's another hint that it's a fairly early system and the audio isn't being transferred digitally, which is what it would be in later systems. So down here, we've got the front panel connectors. We're gonna to have to take those off in a bit when we do the motherboard. As well as the four standard screws on the back, there's a additional screw here holding the power supply in position. Right, so yeah, I wasn't paying attention. So it has got the four standard ATX screws here on the back, but it's then got a bracket for this uh, smaller power supply. And these do have a name and I can't remember what it is. So I'm pretty sure yeah, that, that's gonna make it easier to get out. So I'm pretty sure that Tiny was not uh, sold in many countries around the world. I know definitely the UK, I think parts of Europe and possibly even parts of Asia, maybe. Uh, so the power supply has come out. Let's have a look at it. So it's a Delta power supply, really common brand for OEMs. Uh, output here is 146. Okay, so the five volt and the three volt shouldn't exceed 90 watts. But overall it's, uh, it's basically 150 watt power supply. So it is gonna be possible to take that apart. It's not welded shut, it is, it has got screws on it. So you could, if you had the correct holding skills, take that apart and fix it. That fan's really clean as well. I don't think this machine's had a huge amount of use. All right, now we can see the motherboard a little better. I don't know if you can see these ones in particular here. If I zoom in, I don't think there's much light, but I don't know how well you can see that, but they're a little bit domed. It doesn't appear to be in leakage, but um, not great. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is gonna get a different power supply and see if we can get that working temporarily with this system. They're gonna to be too big to go in the case. Actually, I've, I've assumed that, haven't I? Are they too big to go in the case? Yeah, pretty much. So with those optical drives there, they, this isn't gonna fit. And I think that's a given, given that this bracket here is in place. Now we can actually remove this. If we take off the top panel, that is removable. But anyway, let's just pass these cables through and try and boot the system and see what happens. All right, power button's on the top here. No signs of life. And again, I think front panel connectors are connected, so power switch should be working if the motherboard was alive, and it appears to be not. So, it looks like the motherboard has to come to capacitor issues. So for the purposes of diagnostics, I'm just going to um, try one or more of those power supplies on another motherboard. Uh, I've got a... Um, sorry about the crinkles. So if we try the original tiny power supply, tiny in both sensors. So I've got the power supply plugged in with lead onto the motherboard. I've got a CPU, got some RAM. And then we're just gonna short out the pins to simulate the power button being pressed. So 
if this power supply works, the board should come to life, the fan should come on. So let's try that. Nope, no response there from shorting that pin, the power pin. So it looks like it is the power supply that's dead. Now we know the power supply is not working, we can potentially fix that because it's probably a capacitor or fuse issue. Now, have we got another motherboard we can use in here between these PCI slots we've got? Let's say MS6178 version 1.1. MS, I'm guessing, has a MicroStar motherboard. All the ones from this era are going to have the same problem, so it may be finding a replacement is going to be very difficult. So, the other troubleshooting thing that might be just worth doing is taking out anything on the motherboard that might be causing a short. So, I've just taken out the RAM. If we take out this uh, modem, which is on an AMR slot by the looks of it, although it's a slightly long AMR slot. Not seen that before. All right, so let's give it one last go. Uh, so we've got power back on the motherboard, power to the power supply, press the power button, nothing happens. So yeah, so it looks like it is the motherboard. So having had a look uh, online for spare parts for this machine, uh, it looks like it's not going to be economical to repair it. We're therefore answering our question, can you get a budget one? On well, this case, the answer is no, but the sample size is pretty small. To get the parts to make this work, we need a new power supply, uh, which is the FSX size, by the way. Um, so these new are about £100, depending on the brand. You can get used ones for about 40 but they're going to be about the same age and therefore potentially have the same problems as this one does. New motherboards for the exact same motherboard it's about between 50 and 100 pounds uh sorry 50 and 70 pounds so in terms of whether it's economical to fix this back to its original state the short answer is no got a couple of options one is to put a standard atx power supply in there and try and find very short optical drives or take the optical drives out altogether that's one option but we'll leave some spaces in the front of the case the other option is also the motherboard, we need to replace that. Um, it's a micro ATX, so we should be able to find plenty of things that fit. Uh, they're not going to be genuine, tiny branded ones. I don't know if there's a tiny branded logo when it boots up, for example. Sound found, found exactly the same motherboard. We could, in theory, transfer the BIOS chip from one to the other if it's socketed. Um, and that would make it appear as a tiny branded device. That's going to get really complicated and it is going to get expensive. It's going to be about £100 to put this uh, back working again. I'm just looking at, over at this uh, VGA power connector. It's definitely come off the motherboard. So, um, you know, even if the capacitors hadn't died, we wouldn't be getting video output from this. We'd have to be putting a video card in there, which we probably want to do anyway to get some decent big gaming performance out of this. Have we lost? No, because A, we didn't spend any money. B, we've got some spare parts that we can use in other systems. We've got a 30 gig hard drive. We've got a 128 meg RAM stick. We've got two optical drives and a floppy drive. We've got some cables. So, you know, this is definitely a good donor machine if you want to do that. My feeling is I want to try and get it working. So I'm going to try and find a reasonably priced power supply for this. And I'm probably going to put in a different micro ATX motherboard. It won't be quite the same but at least it will get us back to being a little bit more period correct. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that's a really stupid idea? Um, please leave a comment down below. Otherwise, hope you enjoyed the video. You're probably going to see the system again in a future video, but uh, that's all for now. See you next time.